Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Subatomic, an atom building game. This was sent to me by Genius Games and is designed by John J. Kobayu. Particle physics and chemistry collide in Subatomic, a dual layered deck building game. Players bind up quarks and down quarks and use photon cards to form protons, neutrons, and electrons. Players combine their subatomic particles to either claim elements or build a more powerful deck. The particles are elementary, but the strategies are not. Claiming elements immediately scores points, while building your deck multiplies point scoring later on. Construct huge fun on a quantum scale. Let me show you how to play. So in subatomic, you are trying to build elements using subatomic components. You start with a small deck of up quarks, down quarks, and photon ray cards, which you'll use to create subatomic particles. And then you can use those to score points, buy more, more powerful cards, and score points more efficiently later. Like all standard deck building games, each player starts with a deck of basic cards. Uh, you have your draw pile, you draw cards, and you discard them after you play them. You run out your draw pile. Shuffle your discard pile, it's classic stuff. So on your turn, there are four main actions you can do. Building up your atom, claiming an element card, buying deck building cards, and taking energy tokens. After you've done all those actions, uh, you move all cards you played to your discard pile, uh, and then draw five. Um, and then anything that was bought on the board, you refresh. So let's go into these four actions. The first action you can do is build up your atom to claim an element card. Um, so if you look at these element cards over here, for example, if I want to claim helium, I need two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. Um, and I'm trying to make that on my board here. So what you can do is you can pay the cost. For example, uh, one up quark and two down quarks, that's a neutron. I can get a neutron for that. If I had two uh, of these photons, I could put an electron. Uh, and these tell you the combination of cards you can play um, to, exp to increase your atom. Once you have enough, like let's say I get two electrons, uh, two neutrons, and two protons, then you can claim a card. However, you need to pay energy to do that. I'll explain how you can get energy later. But if I pay three energy, I can claim uh, this element card. Or whenever you claim an element card, you score the points uh, of the mass number on the bottom right. So this one's worth four points. Then all of these reset back to zero. Even if you had extra neutrons or protons, let's say I had three, three, and two, uh, and I got helium, you still reset everything. You then place the element you claimed above your mat, and then you place two of your goal markers on the end goals. Now the only rule is, since I just claimed helium, I can't put a cube on helium. Um, let's say I go, okay, I'm gonna put one on lithium and one on boron. Then I can, if there are any of these bonus tiles here, I can choose one. For example, like a draw two cards, gain two energy tile. Uh, if I claim this, I can use it immediately or I can save it later. Now, as these end goal cubes are placed here, at the end of the game, whoever has the most cubes, let's say on helium, will get four points for every helium element they uh, created. And second place will get two. And so on for all of these. The only thing that's different is element set is uh, you get, if, you're, if you have the most cubes here, you get two points for each unique element you have. If you're second place, one element or one point for each element you have. Yeah, but as cubes are placed here, you're gonna be competing for who scores the top value uh, for those elements at the end of the game. So let's talk about energy. You need energy to do a lot of things. So when you play cards from your hand, you can also play them face down instead and get an energy token each time you do that. So if I discarded two cards like this, face down, I would get two energy. Energy can be useful because you need energy to buy cards to add to your deck. So for example, if I want this proton, neutron, electron card, which lets me play one of them wild, um, or one of the three uh, subatomic particles, I would have to spend, or I have to play one photon, one up wave, or up quark, one down quark, um, and three energy, plus whatever is above it. If I play those cards and spend that energy, this card goes into my discard pile and is now part of my deck. The further along left they are, the more an extra energy they cost. So this one, I would need to play two ups and one down uh, and three energy. 
As cards get bought at the end of a turn, these move over and are replaced. You also have these double particle cards, like this one. Uh, this one costs two energy to play whenever you do it, and it's pretty expensive. It's going to be, you know, you got to spend two neutrons, two protons, and four energy. But whenever you play it, you just get two protons, two neutrons added to your atom immediately. This one is two protons or two energy, which can be useful. Um, this one's one proton and one neutron, and so on. So these double particles can be useful for building up your atom, uh, or some of them can give you extra energy. There are also scientist cards. There are four different ones you pick from in play. For example, we got Niels Bohr. During another player, mimic any one card from their cards in play, then draw one new card. This guy costs six energy, and later card, copies of that card cost one more each. Joseph J. Thompson, take any one subatomic card from your draw pile, then shuffle it, or discard pile. Erwin Schrodinger, discard any number of cards from your hand, including zero, then draw the same number of cards plus one from your draw pile. Albert Einstein, before you play any cards this turn, pay up to three energy and add the same number of subatomic particles to your atom. All other players may pay one energy and add any one particle. Um, there are other scientist cards you can swap out too. Any cards that you buy, like I said, they go in your discard pile to strengthen your deck. The energy tokens that you get from uh, playing cards face down, you do save between turns. So if I have two energy left, I can store them. There are also three energy exchange things you can do. Uh, you can use one energy to swipe any row. What that means is you spend one energy, remove all cards from one row, uh, and replace them with new cards if you don't like them. Uh, you can also spend two energy to draw a card, and an X number of energy to annihilate two cards. This annihilation track up here, when you first use it, the first couple times it's two energy. And each time you use it, this cube moves forward and it gets more expensive. So if it's on here, it costs three energy. And what you can do with that is when you spend the energy, you throw away two cards from the game from your hand. Uh, that can thin out your deck and make your deck more efficient. Now you repeat uh, rounds of the game, you know, buying cards, claiming atoms, and so on, until one player runs out of their gold markers, uh, having placed all of them in the end goals. So that means you're gonna make uh, five elements um, throughout the game at most. Then you finish the round, um, and there are two ways to score. Uh, you can score points for the element cards, as usual, whatever's on them. And then you score points for the end goals, depending on where you rank. If you have the most cubes, you get the top value for each one. And if you are second place, you get the bottom value. Add your bonus points, add your element points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. If there is a tie, uh, then whoever has the most atomic mass remaining on their player mat wins the tie. Uh, and that's the game. Uh, there are some other scientists you can add in, like um, Ernest Rutherford, draw two cards, or draw three cards and all other players draw one card. Marie Gopert Mayer, mimic any two single subatomic cards or any one larger subatomic card from the face-up selection below the board. Marie Curie, look at another player's hand and mimic any two of their subatomic cards. All other players may discard one card and draw one new card. So you can swap these out for the ones on top um, if you want to vary up the game. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. You build up your atom, claim element cards, buy cards to make your deck better, and save up energy to do certain actions. And that's the game. So this was another solid game in the Genius Games educational lineup. Uh, I like when deck building games offer the mechanic of using cards you don't need as energy to pay for actions, I think that's really satisfying. It adds an extra level of, you know, welcome complexity instead of just, uh, play all your cards in your hand. You gotta think, okay, I'll use this one as energy to do this. That's fun. Uh, having three different types of subatomic particles to craft and play can be a handful to juggle at first, but it can also be satisfying to watch as you slowly buy the right cards and start building your atoms efficiently to claim elements. The end goal mechanic is fun. I kind of like that you can't put a cube on the element you're currently claiming. It prevents somebody from just steamrolling with one type of card and focusing on that uh, and kind of making you diversify if you want those bonus tiles or if you want to, you know, stand a chance of claiming uh, victory in that end goal slot. Um, I also always appreciate a deck building game 
that lets you throw away cards at any time. You know, albeit it has an in increasing cost, but I didn't mind that. I like that it's there for you because some deck building games you feel stuck with the cards you have, but the annihilation feature in this is nice. Um, the scientist cards definitely spice the game up. I kind of wish there were more of them in play because um, the subatomic cards are all pretty samey. I get wanting to keep the game simple because, you know, the audience is for kids too, but I would have liked a little more variety in the card effects and types. But overall, though, this is really solid. It's got all the fittings of a well-made deck building game, and the educational theme is on point, and it's charming. It's, it's a good, solid game for kids and adults.